suppose our thinking for this paper, really thinking about uh, metaphor and supply chain theorizing, really began a couple of years ago when we were thinking about the challenges of theorizing sustainability in the supply chain more specifically. And there were discussions that we were starting to have in the field about um, the need to theorize perhaps sustainable supply chains from multiple paradigms. So thinking more reflexively perhaps about the paradigmatic um, assumptions, background, uh, and frameworks, I suppose, within which we were thinking about the sustainability problem and what sustainable supply chains were. And that really got us thinking, I suppose, about <clears throat> um, how we're constructing sustainability. Um, and as part of that, this issue then of metaphors as being a part of the way in which we construct reality, but also therefore we construct supply chains and we theorize about supply chains and sustainability. And I was particularly sort of interested and recognized that the wider sustainability field and, and discourses around sustainability were saying look, we need to think differently. And that really kickstarted this whole idea of, well, what are the metaphoric underpinnings of how we're thinking about the issue of sustainability, the issue of supply chains, and perhaps how are metaphors perhaps constraining our thinking and our theorizing about sustainable supply chains? And then the complementary idea is, well, how can we then more consciously engage with them in a way that can help us to proactively and creatively think in new ways? Um, and develop interesting theory about sustainable supply chain, really. So um, part of what we wanted to do then was to really think about how we could um, harness what was a lot of very rich uh, literature and rich knowledge in the wider fields of organization theory, organization studies, that really were showing the influence of metaphor and how to work with metaphor in theorizing. Um, and so we worked uh, and engaged a lot with that literature and we know from that literature that um, there is a really important place um, for metaphor in theorizing. Part of our issue then and part of my personal issue I suppose with thinking about metaphor was so how do we work with it? Uh, where do we go? What do we need to do in order to leverage the benefits um, of metaphor for theorizing? So part of the research really, the premise of the research was about further developing guidance that we wanted to be useful to scholars to be able to recognize the benefits, but also recognize the nuance in, in different types of metaphors and how they might be um, more or less, in fact, productive for um, supporting theorizing efforts and, and ultimately leading to the development of novel theory. Um, so that really was the, the premise, I suppose, was this idea of guidance and also emphasizing this idea that there's this concept, I suppose, of productivity when it comes to thinking about metaphors in supply chain theorizing. Um, so what we started to do then was to, and what we've done in the paper is try to differentiate between different types of metaphors, such as dormant or dead metaphors, which perhaps maybe uh, relatively less um, fertile ground for, um, for theorizing versus live and novel metaphors, which are known to be more fertile for stimulating new ways of thinking about um, a concept about supply chains and developing new theory. So that was one of the first things. But as part of that then, what we also recognized was that there are different perhaps criteria by which we might evaluate the relative productivity of metaphors. So we started to um, identify or rather synthesize what much wider guidance that's out there for working with metaphors and try to develop our own synthesized framework or set of evaluation criteria for um, evaluating metaphors. And specifically, these words you can see in the paper, the uh, criteria of aptness, which refers to the issue of is the metaphor believable as a metaphor? And this does sort of touch on the idea of, I suppose, similarity. Um, the second criteria was richness, which refers to this idea of there being um, a richness in the theoretical literature, the theoretical raw material that sits behind the metaphor. Um, so concepts, theories, uh, frameworks, um, that we could perhaps on the basis of aptness, 
then leverage as part of our theory borrowing um, and enterprises and exercises, but also then to, to help us in, in building new theory as well. And then finally, the third criteria was interestingness, which refers to a bit more to the idea of difference regarding um, how the metaphoric image and the concept or the, the phenomena that we're exploring is different um, and therefore could be a source of shock to us, some surprising, it might lead us to, to generate some surprising conjectures. Um, and again, this is all on the basis of this can be valuable for, again, generating novel, interesting conjectures that then can subsequently be explored further, um, but at least represent a starting point for, you know, a fruitful theorizing um, endeavor. Yeah, I, I think, I think what's really important in relation to this as well is in terms of thinking through what's new about the paper is we've we've looked at metaphor obviously before in the field of supply chain management and we've, we've got a huge number of metaphors that we've been working with for a long time um, but we tend to work with metaphor in an unconscious way so we talk about buyer supplier relationships and we assume that uh, they are relationships uh, we assume that it's it's not a metaphor, um, but occasionally we we are become aware that it is a metaphor, and then this prompts us to think in which ways it's a metaphor, and then in which ways it's it, it, it works as a metaphor, and then to use that to support our, our theorizing. So there's been some guidance around how we might do this um, in a, in a better way, but this has tended to focus on the idea of aptness. So just the ways in which we can say that interactions between buyers and suppliers are like relationships. And of course, this, this has some, some value, of course, but it's, it's missing something. You know, simply just describing the ways in which buyer-supplier interactions are like relationships or like marriages um, only gets you so far. And what we have to really think about is whether this is interesting or not to say this and in what ways it's interesting because ultimately what we want to do with our theorization efforts is we want to produce something that is interesting that is counterintuitive in some way and metaphor allows us to do that but if we simply just focus on aptness similarity the ways in which an interaction is like a relationship is like a marriage then what we're doing is we're describing something, we're getting some insights into it, certainly, but it's not necessarily interesting. And what we want to do with this paper is really foreground this idea of interestingness as well as aptness. And then relatedly, what we want to do as well is to really help people to think about this in a more rigorous way. As we've said, uh, metaphor tends to be used unconsciously within supply chain uh, theorization. Um, as a whole, not, not always, but as a whole generally. Um, and this is a way of making that process more conscious, more rigorous. So we produce a framework in which um, we can do that. So we can evaluate the metaphors that we use and to think about whether these are metaphors that we, we, we need to abandon and do something different, come up with some new metaphors or to think about ways in which we can reinvigorate metaphors. And that's one of the novelties of this paper, really, is that it allows us, as Victoria was saying, to think about the productivity of the metaphor using our criteria, but then also to think about what we're gonna do with it once we've evaluated its productivity. Um, so if this is a metaphor that has no hope, then we can go into a new metaphoric transfer process and we can come up with some novel metaphors and then our framework allows us to evaluate those novel metaphors according to aptness, frigidness and interestingness. But it also gives us a way of reinvigorating uh, metaphors that we think have more potential, where the, the potential is currently being uh, underrealized. And this is our, our, our discussion around reinvigorating metaphor, which we think is, is going to be hugely relevant for the field in terms of working with metaphor and we, we we map a whole process for doing this and this links to the the second criteria related to metaphor which is richness 
which is going back to that original uh, field where we took the metaphor from, going back there and seeing what new developments um, have been produced within that field and whether those new developments can help us to theorize in a, in a better way. And of course it has to be apt. That's, that's a, a baseline criteria, but it also has to be, be interesting as well. And going back to those fields and seeing what work they've done. And these, these fields are of course very rich. The, 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 the field of marital studies, for example, is a very rich field of study. There's a whole load of work in there that we can use in order to support our own theorization around buyer supply relationships. So we're hoping in this paper that we will allow people, we will give people a, a way of working with metaphor that's more conscious, more rigorous, and gives them a lot more options in terms of working with metaphor in a way that will lead to more interesting and rich theorizations. So where do we want to go from here in terms of this paper and its contribution towards the field. Well, we're hoping firstly, that people will look at the paper, um, they'll realize that metaphor is an important part of theorization. So we're hoping that this will uh, really su support that idea that metaphor is a part of theorization, is a part of how we think about supply chains and encourage reflection on that. Secondly, we're hoping that people will use our framework and that they will use it in order to, to use metaphor in a more conscious and rigorous way, and that this can support further theorization. And that can be related to uh, specific issues such as sustainability. We think there's a huge opportunity for theorizing sustainability within supply chains using metaphor. Um, and we think that that's been underutilized so far. And we know that we do have some issues theorizing sustainability within the field of supply chain management. So we're hoping that our framework could help either reinvigorate some of the metaphors that we're using, for example, the bottom line metaphor, which is coming from the triple bottom line, or whether it's to come up with new novel metaphors for thinking about sustainability and taking it in a completely new direction or it can be working with some of the more established metaphors that we have within the field more generally. In our paper, we talk about uh, relationships as a metaphor, marriage as a metaphor, and those could be developed um, further using our framework and some of the uh, specific advice we give in the paper concerning those metaphors. And of course, um, as has recently been published in the Journal of Supply Chain Management, we also have the, the, the metaphor of dancing which is a metaphor that um, was introduced in the 1990s, didn't really take off, um, but now we, we're seeing that metaphor being reinvigorated within the field. And we hope that our paper will support efforts such as that as well. And then thirdly, I think what we're hoping for is that if we can convince people that metaphor is a way for reinvigorating our theorization efforts. Then what we're hoping for is that we're going to get further reflection on the role within of metaphor within supply chain management as well. Um, this paper isn't intended to be the, the final word on the use of metaphor within supply chain theorization, far from it. We're hoping that this will be um, this will contribute towards a reinvigoration of the discussion of the role that metaphor plays within supply chain theorization. And we're hoping that people will, will take the framework and work with it further in order to show us how we can work with metaphor more effectively. So for example, one obvious opportunity seems to be to think about how metaphor can contribute towards specific types of theorization effort, such as uh, theory building, for example, and developing novel theories uh, and using metaphor as part of that process, but also uh, as part of problematization efforts as well. The Journal of Supply Chain Management um, has been exemplary, I think, in terms of promoting uh, problematization as an authentic approach to theorization. So problematizing our own assumptions, um, trying to think differently about uh, supply chain phenomenon and reinventing uh, supply chain challenges. The journal supply chain has been really exemplary in terms of promoting 
uh, problematization as an alternative theorization effort. And metaphor can play a role within that as well. So we'd like people to not just work with metaphor using our framework, but also to take the framework and improve upon it and use it as a way to enhance our reflection on theorization generally and also the role of metaphor within it. Thank you.